In this video, I'll be ranking all seven ownable bikes in Cyberpunk 2077, exploring how and where to acquire them, comparing speed, acceleration, and more, as well as sharing some insanely cool ways to get around on bikes now. I'll also be adding them to the tier list, which I've constructed across the last two car ranking videos, to ultimately see which is best. Let's get to it. Down at the bottom then, same as it's always been, is the Brennan Apollo. Now, let me explain. Out of these seven bikes we can own, none of them are definitively bad. In fact, every single one belongs in A or S tier when compared with the cars. A lot of the bikes also share very similar, if not identical, stats, at which point we have to rank them based on acquisition and maybe sentimental value. Apollo then sits at the bottom with the lowest top speed of 107 miles per hour, very slow by most vehicle standards, and a 0 to 60 of 6 seconds, which is not great, but not terrible. Like with the cars, I also tested every single bike's endurance to firepower, only to learn that they were all exactly the same. One bullet per tyre, 2.2 magazines of dying night to the engine, or one arm projectile to explode. In fact, when it comes to protection during vehicle combat, cars are the clear winner there. Bikes leave you totally exposed to enemy gunfire, and even though we can wield melee weapons on them like some kind of cyber knight, constantly swinging around and trying to get close enough is so so much more clunky than just using guns or dismounting for a second. Luckily, they have the unique benefits of doing parkour stunts now though, which I'll explain more about in a little bit. Brennan, specifically, is bought from Autofixer for 30,000 eddies, the cheapest of the three bikes on there, obviously, but still quite possibly the best at off-roading. This model and Scorpion's Apollo essentially serve as our two dirt bikes of the game. They might not travel as quick, but do handle brilliantly, and traversing the Badlands on these you'll no doubt run into less mishaps and thus reach your destination actually quicker. But unless you're particularly enamoured with the design, there's not really much reason to choose it over the freely acquired Scorpion model. Next up, the first of four variants of the Arch Nazare bike we can own now, and this is the standard version we can purchase from Autofixer for 71k, the most expensive bike in the game. Each of the four arches have the exact same stats of 150 top speed, 4 second 0 to 60, and 14 second 0 to 120, as well as, of course, the standard bike durability. I'm a big fan of the yellow and black design of this one. It kind of goes with David's jacket and also makes me want to go and watch B-Movie, but since it's the only one of the four, that we have to actually pay for, that in my book lands it slightly lower down. Fun fact about the Arch motorcycle brand though, is it's actually something that exists in real life, with the Arch Method 143 model made in 2018 being the basis for the Nazare. The company was founded by two tombs named Gard Hollinger and Keanu Reeves, and what I find bizarre here is the striking resemblance that the latter of those two has to our in-game brain dweller Johnny Silverhand. Coincidence? I think not. In all seriousness though, I think it's awesome that they collaborated to feature Keanu's own motorcycle in the game too. I mean, after all, why not? It's free product placement. And if corporate ever asked me to find the differences between this picture and this picture, I would have to say they're the same picture. Further to that, the database description of this thing describes it as a pinnacle of freedom, unlocking a way of life that would strike jealousy into the hearts of any corpos cooped up in their offices. In fact, this particular model is back on the market after being purchased by a corpo to show off to his corpo buddies. He sadly simply couldn't handle the thing, launching himself into the air so hard that not even Trauma Team Platinum could save him. I guess bikes like this will only allow themselves to be ridden by those who are truly worthy. This one took the top spots in my 1.6 edition of the bikes video, but after careful review, I have reconsidered that placement. Don't get me wrong, the striking horned faceplate on the front and the whole neon aesthetic are still a design I'm a big fan of, yet as bikes go, it's statistically identical to over half this list and not quite the winner there. Nor does it have any sentimental value or special connection to us. It's found instead by coming to Rancho Coronado, and in the block with the weapon vendor and Ripperdock will be this white horse symbol that's possibly a reference to Roach. Entering the garage within and scanning this messed up bike, then reading the terminal, will trigger the quest Highwayman, where we go full-on concerned citizen detective mode to learn what happens to an Aldecaldo named Josie Alcazar. Jump to the next timestamp if you want to play it for yourself and don't want it spoiled, but basically Josie was in a relationship with this dude called James Ito, a tiger claw, but the gang was none too happy about this, so told Josie to leave Night City. When she didn't, they destroyed her bike, possibly one of the worst 
worst, most aggravating things somebody could do to an elder Caldo. So, in revenge, Josie went and clapped the much more flashy and shiny Nazare Itsumade from a Tiger Claw boss, hiding it in a garage near All Foods. What we have to do is seek out her boyfriend James from the location in this photograph, which is here in Japantown, and he'll explain this whole situation. After speaking to him, we'll be able to find Josie's weeks deceased corpse lying in an alleyway outside of an end card station. She'd gotten into a firefight with the tigers because, unbeknownst to her, James had sold her out. The cowardly spineless gonk had chosen his life over that of his lovers. Josie died slowly, Josie died painfully, and Josie died alone. Yet still placing utter faith in James the whole time to come and save her. So much so as to leave him a shard with the stolen bike's location and the code of the day they met. A piece of info only James would rightfully know if it wasn't also graffitied onto the very same bench where we find him. Return to James and berate him for being a spineless coward, then head to All Foods. Head across the road from the fast travel and input the code to find the stolen Tiger Claw bike. In fact, you can actually acquire this one as early as the pickup if you already know the code, but that's a little bit cheaty. Still, you can always complete the rest of the quest afterwards, you just won't get anything at the end since you'll already have it. And I mean, that to me would be like opening your Christmas presents in November. Anyway, it's a very cool looking reskin of the Arch Nazare, and that's the whole story behind it. In fact, holding down V when driving this one, in fact, when driving any of the bikes, and you can neon them up even more, activating these glowing rims around the tires. But this next one I found to be a little cooler still, aesthetically, not to mention tied to a better quest. The Melina Mobile was the only bike added in Phantom Liberty, and it's basically just a Lena Melina inspired retexture of the Itsumade, painted in Lena's iconic purple and orange pattern, but still having the same kind of back supported seat and demonic face. It's a potential quest reward for dazed and confused, quick spoiler warning for that quest, but to get it, you'll have to pick the secret sister option during the BD shoot. This will result in capturing a great scene between Lena and Tool, the latter of whom's had his brain reprogrammed and thinks he's also Lena, so this option won't wake Tool up from his delusions, but it will very much please Lena, and she'll continue to shoot more BDs with her now partner thereafter. I'll cover the other options and outcomes in my next video, but I'd argue anything but this is less morally reprehensible. Still, the only way to get the bike is to exploit Tool's damaged mental state as much as you possibly can. Don't forget to pick up the baby boomer baseball bat when leaving the studio at first, another thematic piece of gear, then wait for several days. Lena will continue to text you before finally leaving Dogtown for Night City for bigger shoots with her and Tool. As a thanks for our help, she'll leave us the Melina Mobile. Okay, I can't believe I said Melina Mobile in my original recording. It's obviously Melina Mobile. Melina Mobile, Sam. Somehow having driven it all the way up these flights of steps to the studio door. It's got the same stats as all the other arches, but reads a bit differently when scanned, with the slightly naughty description of rear drive if you ask nicely. And then, quote, this four-cylinder, 178 horsepower, hot piece of engine will get your fine ass to any party on time. So if you want to arrive fashionably late, lay off the chew, take it slow, and enjoy the vibrations. Winky face. End quote. Classic Lena. And I'd imagine someone at CDPR had a little bit of fun when writing this. Still, comparing it side by side with the Itsumade, one could practically call them sisters. Into the STNL, and up first we have Scorpion's Apollo. Yes, it has the exact same low speed of 107 and 6 seconds 0 to 60 as the regular Apollo, but it is acquired for free at the end of life during wartime, when Pan Am interestingly decides that one of Scorpion's prized worldly possessions should be inherited by an outsider who met the man for pretty much 5 seconds. Still, never gonna turn down a free bike. And in fact, what this thing lacks in speed, it more than makes up for in suspension and control. The go-to bike when traversing the Badlands for me easily. Sure, the other Apollo works the same, but with this one, we're honoring a man's legacy, enjoying the freedom of the open road and celebrating being a member of the Alder Caldos. But here's a big tip, the one I teased earlier. This method can absolutely revolutionize the way you traverse Night City on bikes and lets you unlock a lot of snazzy shortcuts. What you'll first need are one of two revolvers, the Comrade's Hammer from this suspected crime in Santo Domingo, or better still, like her from a random airdrop in Dogtown. Now, in the Revolvers video, I didn't rank these two that high. I complained about the removal of Comrade's godly wall penetration, and I stand by that for regular combat. But what these explosive hand cannons can instead do now is this. Oh. 
shooting at various areas around the base of the bike at different speeds will launch it sideways or into the air to perform all kinds of useful and fun stunts. Wanna leap over a highway barrier? Easy. Jump off a bridge to the intersection below? No problem. Hell, it can even launch you up onto slightly higher platforms if you have the right timing and skill. Seriously, it looks and feels like a gimmick at first, but the more I messed around with this mechanic, the more I grew to realize how utterly versatile and time-saving it can actually be. Cars may be the winner when it comes to surviving vehicle combat, but this gives bikes a way bigger edge on maneuverability than they already had. If one of the four available archers, all with identical stats, has to place at the top though, then of course, why would it be anything other than our absolute best tumber, Jackie Wells' model of the arch? Jackie bought this with his earnings from the Sandra Dorset gig after the arch shop contacted him asking if he wanted to buy a collector's item. And despite being out of his price range, Jackie decided to throw down eddies on the thing anyway. Looking at it, I think I can see why Jackie in particular was drawn to this thing. It just has that kind of aesthetic of street kid with ambition wanting to be part of the major leagues type of merc. Of course, the tragedy of Jackie Wells did sadly mean that owning this was probably the closest he ever felt to that dreamed about life. However, I can think of no better way to honor his legacy than by ruling the streets of Night City atop this thing whilst wielding his Lachingona de Lada pistols, then pulling into the afterlife at the end of the day and knocking back a Moscow mule with a splash of love. This is, in my eyes, the most sentimental roleplay bike in the game, and to acquire it, simply complete Hero aka Jackie's off friend quest, or if you sent him to Victor, Mama Wells will simply just give you the bike. And if you didn't already know, nomads can actually transform this into Jackie's tuned arch with a high enough tech skill by selecting this dialogue prior to the pickup. Cool thing about this is that it actually gains 15 extra horsepower and plus 6 to weight, now featuring 4 exhaust pipes rather than 2. So not only is it another cool little piece of Jackie history to remember him by if you're a nomad, but it's also a marginally better bike with even even a slightly reduced 0 to 60 of a couple milliseconds. But with all these bikes being so similar in combat and handling, it makes sense that the number one entry should go to the bike with the top speed, though the sleek as hell Akira inspired design certainly buffs it up too. I hadn't seen that movie when I made the first bikes video, but I have now. Go and watch it if you haven't, it's absolutely insane. Anyway, the Yaiba Kusanagi CT3X can be purchased from Autofixer for 66,000 eddies. Hits a very good top speed of 170 on the flat, goes from 0 to 60 in 4 seconds, and 0 to 120 in just 13. Excellent stats all round that can even compete with the top hypercars. Traversing the streets of Night City, it is therefore the bike you'll be getting from A to B fastest in, but only if you can still handle such speeds when flying around corners. Something the database recommends only those with superhuman reflexes should ever attempt to do. Clearly a walk in the park for us. One thing I did note though regarding traversing the terrain is it didn't always jump as high when utilizing my new favorite hand cannon X. Exploits. This makes sense of course, the Kusanagi has the highest curb weight of all the bikes, but then again, at the North Oak roundabouts, I did have this happen, so I feel like jumping around with this is largely a case of luck as much as it is skill. So not only is it the best bike in the game then, by most accounts when all said and done, it's also a fantastic homage and crucial design to make this world both look and feel definitively cyberpunk. And if I could only buy one bike in the game, which isn't saying much, there's only three for sale, but it'd be this one, easily. Would I buy it over the Wingate though, my favourite car? Slightly tougher question, but I think based on how much fun I've had getting up to hand cannon launching shenanigans when making this video, at this very moment, I'm inclined to say yes. Yes, I would choose it over the Wingate. But either way, they both absolutely belong up in S tier, which rounds off my tier list for all 65 of the game's vehicles. Feel free to screenshot this as a general guide when picking which vehicle to take, though do bear in mind, it is entirely my fairly well-researched opinion. Thank you as always to my wonderful patrons for keeping the channel alive and providing freedom and security to pursue larger projects like this three-part vehicle ranking. And of course, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Go watch the Cars videos if you haven't yet. I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you in the next one.